yeah, you met him during the trial, which was interesting because you, you were the one that told him that he didn't have a ch- he didn't have a chance because his lawyers were going for the insanity insanity, yeah, exactly. insanity defense. Yeah. So that was must have been interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm quite drama at the end there. I mean, it's, it happens. It happens to a lot of people, I guess. Like, get like um, as, as well as just like like put pressure on them to, to take plea deals and stuff. Sure. Um, so, I'm just looking at my questions. Yeah, the, I mean, the first big one, I think, the first big one is how do you determine what direct action targets are, are justifiable today? Because I'm interested in T- Ted Kaczynski's effect on the world, and I know that he inspired a lot of people on the left, inspired a lot of people on the right, and like some good things I would say, like uh, animal liberation front, uh, uh, liberation front activists, like were inspired by him to take action. Um, but I'm a bit worried he's, he's, he can be like a stepping stone, like he had the individualists uh, tending towards savagery or towards, towards wild who who were influenced by him and, uh, from going from like an affinity group in Mexico to... Yeah, if in fact yeah. there, there really was such a group, it's that's debatable, I guess. That right, yeah. Kind of, kind of a farce. Um, but it does, it, whether it's fictional or not, I mean, mm. well, whether some it's, of the, it's fantasy, yeah. it still raises uh, the same questions. Yeah. I'm much more interested in uh, critique than I am in uh, tactics. But mm-hmm. to me, it's, what's really at the base of it is it usually is, is the question of violence. What mm-hmm. is violence and what is not violence? And mm-hmm. I think my position is rather simple. If you, It's not violence if, if it's not directed at, at uh, some form of life. In other words, mm-hmm. you can't violate a building or, a, you know, what have you. Yeah. In my view, I mean, friends of mine disagree. I mean, it's, they would say, no, this is and we don't shrink from violence, and that's a position... Uh, mm-hmm. too. So, but I'm, you know, I just think that in general, it's, uh, there are a lot of targets and, uh, you know, you have to, it, it depends. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think you can get too far finding that question in the abstract, but I could be wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, some, it's, it, I mean, some websites try to like, put like, a, a, like names and principles thing of like, what, what, Actions they'll they'll record, and then I think that can can influence um, what actions people take and what actions people think are justified. Like, I mean, yeah, you have I mean you have um, people saying uh, like by any means necessary, going back to like Malcolm X in the sixties. Um, but um, I, I I don't know I, I've I've written up I've I've like um, experimented with writing up like a list of principles for kind of what. Um, Direct action is uh, principles are necessary at different stages in, in in kind of history in terms of like peacetime and when uh-huh. social tensions are. So I don't know, I don't know what you think about those or if um if you well just mention that uh, mm-hmm. Kaczynski did refine his own view on that. I mean he mm-hmm. he apologized for that early crude bomb on the jetliner. He he renounced that mm-hmm. and I think he the targets were relatively more appropriate as he went along and as they became more lethal uh on that level anyway you could i think you could argue that that's the case mm. and what um, what where is the effectiveness i mean what what success are you having or not having i mean that that can tell you uh something about you know which what things to do or what things to avoid and and what would be the measurements of success for you do you think well are, are you advancing the uh to me the advancing well in fact i would say advancing the dialogue i think that mm-hmm. if you're if your thing is mainly critique it's a question of the conversation in society is mm-hmm. it is there some resonance is there some interest is there some uh development going on there mm-hmm. or or have you in other words i'm not afraid of certain tactics that people shrink from uh, commonly yeah from and they say well that's just that's just you're just turning everybody off I mean, but sometimes i think you have to go through that stage if you will i mean sometimes that's that comes with the territory in other words they will people will be defensive and w- horrified or whatever at first mm-hmm. and then they won't be you mm-hmm. know then it becomes part of the the dialogue you know then then things change they don't remain the same in yeah. other words, it can be shock at the beginning with some tactics, but that wears off. I think that's 
I would assert that that's likely to be the case. Right, and and you made the the comparison between um, J Kaczynski and John Brown in, in that way, um, and I think yeah. I've yeah, and I, I I mean the difference I would say is that for me is in those two situations are that John Brown was like uh, five six years away from a civil war and and it was it was very much like um it was like they were accepted as guerrilla um, they were accepted as using guerrilla warfare tactics um for the time. Uh, and um, yeah, so so Kaczynski, Kaczynski's actions were in some ways like asymmetrical warfare, but but they were like they're very far away from any like they they didn't have any like snowballing effect. They weren't like strategic targets that that um, that scared people off from doing it, like carrying on or anything. I don't I don't know. From well, my, I was from my surprised, point. quite frankly, I was surprised by the um, by the levels of uh, sympathy. That were mm -hmm. spontaneously expressed mm -hmm. in the U.S. in the 90s. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, really, uh, there was much well, much less horror, uh, or there was horror at the bombings and stuff. But it but there was also there was also a good deal of sympathy. I, I was mm -hmm. I was rather surprised. Mm -hmm. Like one case, uh, my wife. Uh, she knew this woman at the business school at the university here, and they, this person commented on the footage, the media footage when they were taking him uh, somewhere in Montana before he, before they moved him to California, mm. and he's dressed. It's a, it's a well-known deal. He's got a sport coat on, and you can tell he's got a vest on underneath, and he's kind of looking up at the sky as he's walking along, and she her comment was, "Why don't they just put a cross on his shoulders?" In other words, comparing him to Jesus, for Christ's sake. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a little unexpected, especially from a rather, quote, straight person who's not, uh, who's not a, an anarchist or anything of the sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, definitely it was a, it was a novel case, wasn't it? I mean, people have fascination with lots of, I mean, I'm, I'm fascinated by um, uh, Eileen Warno's case, how, how, how she affected culture in a bit, because, um, uh, like, she um people thought it was like there was um there was people that thought when they heard the radio do you know do you know the case of eileen warnos um the what case the uh, case of eileen warnos um she uh, she was a sex worker um her sex her hitchhiking hooker um um who uh, killed men and and so it was like it was this it was this weird um for the time it was it was this weird just juxtaposition because uh, women were getting uh, killed, uh, sex working women were getting killed all, all the time by um, by men, and so so it, it flipped the script a little bit. That, that there was actually yeah, um, I remember uh, that. Truck, yeah, there was actually truck drivers that were afraid to pick up women because because they were worried about getting killed. So um, and some people and some people um, hearing about it, uh, hearing about it on the radio thought it was like um, like out of like an Orwell novel, like they, that they were that or the Martian. What was the one with the Martian landing? Um, anyway, so yeah, th these things do um, provoke, like definitely. His, his, I mean, I'm fine with people for sure um, finding a lot of value in his in his philosophy, and he's definitely like intellectual and 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 fat and like and found, and has found um, a good critique of of modern civilization for ninety percent of his work. Um, yeah, I just I just worry that like his his effect on the world is is, is going to be. Like a stepping stone um, to the right for a lot of people. So, so in terms of um, in terms of like yeah, in terms of t discussing his his legacy or something, um, uh, we need to figure out ways to lay some principles and say that that what he, what he did um, was chaotic and wrong and um, mostly and and uh, we need we need solid principles for direct action today to be to be to <clears throat> to uh -huh. lay the stepping stones for going forwards. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, just a couple of questions. There's, um, yeah, I mean, well, you. So you're. I mean, um, yeah. There's lots of different primitive sources. You're, you're one that's, um, uh, looks at the alienation of um, like symbolic culture and and the division of division of labour. Um, in in terms of 
I know you I know you disagree with um uh, it's and random mail bombings and stuff um but in terms of like people agreeing with the philosophy um is it is it how do they yeah just and without without do you do you i mean there's the principles that you can point to and say that like the, um uh, it needs to be part of it needs to be part of like a social movement working towards change making these stepping stones um are you, are you not concerned that uh you could be promoting direction which falls outside ethical principles um like like the ones i go uh such that you run the risk of motivating someone to take Direct action, which makes um, the rebellion uh, or resistance look um, look insane, and so leads people to wish to preserve the status quo or facilitate a move to a more well. Uh, again, I would say it's, it, what are you? Uh, what is happening in terms of social movements? I mean, there's very little right now. Uh, mm. This isn't. Uh, I mean, I could point to the anti-globalization years, so-called. You know, mm. around. 1999 to 2001, mm -hmm. uh, which was pretty considerable thing. It's kind of forgotten, but I mean, I don't know. Perhaps Kaczynski is forgotten, and and to me, his rigidly anti-tech focus is, you know, kind of loses its steam. I mean, as you know, I'm anti-civilization, and if you're just stuck mm -hmm. with only the anti-tech thing, you 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 get to this wooden position where you mm -hmm. you lose a lot of. Uh, Potential, it seems to me, because the rest of it, to me, flows. And this question of, uh, you know, I noticed in the notes with this fellow Normandy, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. or you were saying, well, you don't want to be stuck in some medieval uh, deal without industry. Well, mm -hmm. that's right there. You get the problem, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the piece, not to go too far mm -hmm. along with this, but. There was a piece in the American magazine, the, uh, the New Yorker, mm -hmm. back in the 90s, when the, when the trial was still going on, I believe. It was simply called E Pluribus Unabomber. It was kind of a funny little one-page piece. And it, it posed the question precisely, precisely that. Okay, so you're against modern technology? Does that mean you want the Middle Ages? And he never answered that question. Mm -hmm. But there, there it is. I don't want the Middle Ages. Hell no. You know, mm. got to look back to see the, the what this crisis is all about, what has mm. brought it brought us to this stage, and otherwise, mm. you're just kind of stuck with this one note uh, deal that's uh, really rather limited. Mm. It's insisted over and over and over. He has no interest in anything but but modern technology. I mean, that's that's almost silly. Yeah, the, the crisis shows that it's this much bigger and much deeper. Than that, it's it comes to a head with the, the technological society. And mm -hmm. by the way, he told me he he got his ideas from Elol. It's the American mm -hmm. vernacular version of the technological society. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. it is. That's his great gift. That's his great uh, plus. He made it very mm -hmm. readable. You know, mm -hmm. the the original or the original translation into English is is hard to read. It, it has that abstract classical mode. Of, mm. of French, uh, the way French are taught to write, and mm. it's very off-putting, I think, in the the rest of the uh, <laughs> the rest of the world, the rest of the West, in any way, the rest of say America. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting. Elul um, is kind of a classical Christian anarchist, and and likes like the um, what's they called the Anabaptists. This kind of like small communities of like federated society. So he doesn't. He's he's very critical of te technique and technology, but um, but he still wants to make accommodations for it if, if we can view it as tools. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like um, so I mean I think a lot. I from what I've, talk, what I've talked to about Normandy, I think he he kind of like optically wants to, or anti-industrialists like him want to. Maybe want to identify as anti-industrialists rather than primitivists because they don't want to, they don't they they want to like it's like a first, maybe it's a first step or maybe it's like acknowledging that primitivism is a lot harder but anti-tech is is achievable in that you can just like uh, destroy the electricity grids and it will um and it will be harder yeah. hard to get hard to get that bit, bit back up uh, straight straight oh, away. Sure. Like, well, it's, mm. it's less abstract. Here we are, mm. so totally immersed in the technology and the the alienation mm -hmm. that's brought is just frightful. It's just so palpable. It, 
it, it's just you know utterly impossible to ignore. So yeah, there's the technology on all sides at, at every moment. So sure, mm -hmm. it's it's obviously part of the the problem. Of mm -hmm. course, it's uh, right up there. But if yeah. that's just part of it. To me, it's like the the leftists who uh, are only limited to talking about capitalism. Well, of course, one's against capitalism, but it, it goes much deeper than that, right? It mm -hmm. goes at the roots of it. Look, look where how that emerges and why, you know. Mm. Yeah, and I definitely like a lot of like uh, Bookchin or also of eco-feminist philosophy of like um, like the priestly classes and stuff of, uh, throughout history of 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 um, besides anti-capitalism of, of like um, have. Um, tried to like uh, keep people ignorant and keep people down, and um, uh, keep higher, um, so keep people in hier hierarchies from way before in feudal times. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, but I just in terms of getting this global shift, is it is it is it that you just don't have kids and like within a hundred years you you you've only got a very small population or how? Um, like obviously um some direct action to um encourage people and show them the way or something but it's um i don't think well, yeah, i don't see kind of hard to answer i mean that's the yeah. main challenge what would that look like mm. how fast could that happen if we change directions and uh, start to imagine things so mm -hmm. differently i mean uh you know who can say and whether it happens at all is obviously an open question it may not get anywhere with this you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, clear about that, I don't, and no one can yeah. can be. I don't think so. But you know, you start to think about the the emerging directions and the the transition and so forth. That, but only when you get to that place can you start to pose those questions mm -hmm. and think about specific practical uh, parts of the picture. You know, it's it's. It's maybe trying to speculate there, and and I have to some degree, but it's uh, you know, that's a further question. It seems to me. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I like yeah, I like the critique in, in a lot of ways. Like I want, like I, I talk about um this like concept of minimum viable use. So like if you, if you can, if you if uh, you want to like we we have a really, really nice culture in in europe of um of like punk post of like if we want to if we want to talk to someone who's on like a on a camp like across the country then you and someone's going that way then you write them a letter and and that person uh, takes it to them so if you, uh, so ra yeah so rather rather than calling them you, you you put the effort into into like the creativeness of the of the writing and then that's like the minimum viable use technology for needed for that task and then in the way and then in doing that you've um you've fulfilled yourself more than just a, a quick phone call yeah exactly um, I think that technology is erasing now we mm. just text don't even want to hear the human voice i mean mm. it's just getting so monstrous so fast mm. and maybe that's uh, of course the strangely silver lining in the whole thing it's just uh, impossible to ignore the effects and people yeah. are so miserable. I mean, the immiseration is just uh, uh, just almost unimaginable. But there it is. It's mm -hmm. you know the alienation, the isolation, this you know suicide among the young, death, of despair, opioid crisis, on and on and on. It's uh, it's just huge uh, estrangement. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good segues. So you you talk a lot about um, school shootings on your on your show, and and that's like a really like uh, it's, it's a it's a horrific thing, and and um, it's a sign of of atomization and cult culture being fragmented, and um, yeah, uh, and um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you had a weird case of of someone phoning your radio show years before, and they they did a school shooting. And um, uh, I, yeah, you had there was a CNN piece that Adam uh, Lanza, yeah, that's mm. that was uh, pretty incredible. Mm. He, he did he acted out the very thing that he was uh, trying to uh, raise awareness of it. You know, the the chimpanzee right. attacking its owner uh, in a very uh, horrible way, and uh, mm. 
and you know he said that's us we're we're forced into these uh impossible unnatural ways of being and uh people are going to snap like mm. the chimpanzee and then he's and then he snapped i mean think yeah. about yeah incredible yeah. irony there yeah i mean it's 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 really difficult and I, I don't know how I would like if i i don't know how you could you would have ha- do you, know, do you do you have any idea how you would have handled it if you'd known that it, like if we if we had like amazing foresight of of of, inter- of interpreting what he was what what he meant? Well, I mean, that would what have been, it would have been really nice, but he struck mm. uh, my co-host as as kind of a quiet, troubled high school kid. I mean, just mm. but but picking up on on the reality mm. of of life in uh, late civilization and how bizarre it mm. is and the pressures when it's under. We mm-hmm. we know we both said, uh, yeah, exactly. Thanks for the call. I mean, it it didn't. It certainly did not occur to us that mm-hmm. he was part of the very, you know, thing he was warning about. And I mm-hmm. guess that was about a year later that that happened. And then, yeah, it just that would have been awfully nice. But we we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just thought that's that's quite a good insight. That's quite a good uh, parallel that you're making and uh you know that was it there wasn't any dialogue we, we didn't even mm. he was just trying to bring out that point mm-hmm. and bothered to call and yeah thanks for the call and that was that mm-hmm. if, if only we could have yeah. foreseen uh that he was actually going in that very direction it would have been yeah. nice we could have tried to do something mm-hmm. could have tried to engage him uh in, in terms of where he was at, you know, with how, how his life was, his yeah. own life. Yeah, and I mean, I guess you, I, I, I know like primitivists in my life, and I, I know like a lot of them like get a lot of value from it when they, when they get into the philosophy and, and they, they start like an allotment and they, they feel like more connected to the earth and um, all this stuff, and maybe like work on food and our bombs and stuff. They're, they're very much like part of campaigns on the left. Um, but I mean, it's like I I don't know if if I had because I know that I'm not a primitive, so I know that if if I'd had that call, I I might have I might have tried to challenge him a little bit on on domestication and and whether like violence is whether like even even if you're pushed to an extent through like bullying in school or something like um whether I don't know I don't know how <laughs> I, I guess um my fumbling over my words now is, is showing that I, I wouldn't have the perfect words to say but but um uh I don't know I guess I would I, I worry that um like a, a shared um a shared validation of like deindustrialization without challenging those that underlying philosophy maybe it could have it could have been a turning point like there's um the CNN piece uh this, the doctor of criminology they had on at the end of the CNN piece said um, the subject said the subtext of what he's the school shooter is saying is violence is innate and instinctual to humans and really should not be put, uh, punished because it's the natural basis. That's the message I think he's trying to get across and the parallel to himself is obvious. He feels possessed by this need, this compulsion to commit violence. So do you, do you agree with that? Do you think do you think that would, do you think he was saying something like that, or or do you think he was just it sounds, trying? It's very very off base. He, right. The people are innately uh, homicidal. Is that that's what he's saying? Well, the doctor of criminology was saying that this that he himself was bringing up the story because um because maybe he he felt those impulses within himself because of domestication because of like um, bullying at school, and that and that and that if wasn't domestication it wouldn't have happened to him so then his violence is justified in some way or something well yeah that seemed to be the lesson of what he what he phoned uh, the show about you know that that's mm. uh, that's what you get that's why this chimpanzee freaked out mm. and attacked its owner i mean precisely mm. because of uh, the the domestication control the so unnatural and and, mm. and painful and it just caused the animal to snap and, yeah. and that, what you know, that he was saying, of course, that, that that's a, it corresponds to the situation in society. Mm-hmm. It, it's just so uh, unbearable, really. And yeah. and I bet there was there quite possibly bullying in 
the picture. The, there have been other cases of mass shootings where there was, in fact, bullying, and then that's part of the, uh, you know, the onerous uh, life that uh, some somebody's living, and and they it's intolerable. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I still, I guess, like I would have challenged him in terms of like, or challenged anyone who talked about violence as as kind of like, I don't know. Um, I would have tried to say like um, um, that there's there's like it's not it's not acceptable what what um, the way schools are schools are structured at the moment the way bullying bullying is allowed to happen and the way the way way we can domesticate by technology to a degree. Um, uh, but I just I worry that like because there's a there's a like a, there's a sect of like nihilist primitivism of like the its variety that that think like uh, think nature is violent in some way and, and that they they um rather than it just being nature being destructive um that they, they are just trying to do it so if if i if i came across someone like that i would hope that i would try and talk them over to a kind of a kind of personal uh the techno technological the um personal like low-tech lifestyle but um but to see yeah. that like there's a future in in um Building better schools and not not being just tied to do to take to take violence in that way. So yeah. I don't know. You have to see. I mean, are are is somebody coming from an anti-authoritarian point of view or not? You know, it's mm. that's that's kind of basic. Mm. Or you know, put it another way: is this person an anarchist? Are we starting mm. out with the same sort of general uh, approaches or values? You know, that's. Mm. I mean, sometimes these. I don't know. Uh, some mm. some of this stuff just off the table, like this ITS stuff, that was strike me as uh, completely unworthy of uh, making any contribution at all. I, I was just appalled that people like the mm. little black card folks were saying, "Oh, we can learn something from this." Really murdering uh, random people? Mm. Mm. <laughs> no, no, it's not. That's just sick and it's fucked up. And and if that's what mm. passes for being an anarch just uh no thanks uh, you just have to distance yourself from shit like that mm -hmm. cool okay yeah definitely agree on that um so the last thing was um uh is um i, I found i read a, what i thought was a good book by um saul newman on um the politics of post anarchism his um oh, um his uh his take on on where, where we should be going he, he kind of values like um uh like um do you know the zad in france um so uh, temporary autonomous zones of like um uh, zone zone of defense and um and just like a kind of um separating oneself off from um like cities but um but rebelling in in kind of a, not not a not a storming the bastille way i don't know i don't know if you, maybe i'm have, you already know all this stuff um uh but well, um I with Newman, I mean, he's a classic mm -hmm. post-structuralist, post-modern mm -hmm. character. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it gets down to basic stuff, doesn't it? I mean, if you feel like presence is just an illusion, most basically because there's nothing outside of symbolic culture, right? Outside the text, there is nothing, Derrida, right? Well, mm -hmm. what if that's not true? What if there's an alternative to symbolic culture, to the whole representational racket? I mean, mm -hmm. I think there's quite possibly there is uh, that possibility. In fact, in practice, there was hunter gatherer mm -hmm. life, pre symbolic culture, right? For millions, for over a million years, uh, it was, you know, face to face community, uh, non hierarchical. These these are generalities here, but you know, uh, mm -hmm. they did quite well without symbolic culture, without art, without the concept of number, without a lot of things. So mm -hmm. you, you can you can make the assertion, and you know. A lot of it's traced back to, say, Derrida or others, but just because you're saying there is no, that's just a fiction, that the presence cannot exist because uh, you can't get outside of the symbolic. Well, that's 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 one point of view, but I don't think that's true. That's just, yeah. a, you know, it's part of the general surrender politically. In times of, in, in more or less reactionary times, you get philosophies like that, you know, which which sort of take over. The whole the whole backward uh, aspect of postmodernism, 
it really is uh, a way of, at a time when there's pretty much no social movements, you get stuff like that. And that's that's a crude way to put it, but that's that's part of the picture, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, take the point. Um, I think obviously the, uh, they would they would say that about some primitivists, but um, uh, so I mean, in terms, of, I I don't know. I I guess they're maybe they they I don't know how they're defining symbolism. I guess um, I like my my perspective is like animals are using uh, symbols and language, kind of going way back to like parrots and, and uh, primates, but um, well, I, I think know. it's more. I mean that is tricky. I mean it's it's an open question, but mm -hmm. uh, animals do communicate. But I think it's more signals than symbols. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not really representational. It's it's in in the way of symbolic culture that the humans have. It's uh, mm -hmm. just because they communicate. Of course they do. Birds, uh, all sorts of animals, they have to for mm -hmm. survival. But that doesn't that doesn't make it uh, very symbolic. It seems to me. But anyway, that's these definitions have to, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of problematic because you we use these terms in different ways or in elastic ways that yeah. then, the, then the whole conversation becomes a little confusing. Mm. So I, I don't, yeah, I don't want sure. to take too rigid a position, but it's uh, mm. you don't have to have symbolic language for there to be uh, communication. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, that's obvious, I guess. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's it's tricky for sure. Like, I, I mean, I, I get into debates all the time with people about like um, uh, who like who wants to use language like um, anti uh, abolish work and abolish prisons and um, and uh, it's it's a I mean, it's a trying it's a trying to reframe the debate. Um, but um, yeah. uh, I don't know. Um, so I mean, but just in terms of I point out, like, in terms of like whether whether we should desire kind of like an authenticity of, of of like a long like a large period of our um evolutionary history as humans um uh, i don't know like i i um uh, i think potentially we could be like suffering more now for sure um but it could be like suffering that um that we we desire to take on in, in in if we if we can get to like this left anarchist pro technology future um uh it can it could be like a source of virtue for us like you know, striving for these intellectual um skills and um uh i don't know like authenticity uh it's it is it's this kind of it's um it's a, as a concept it's only like developed recently like we um we used to have uh, we used to th think of authenticity as like sincerity, like sincerity to your family, and like and like be and like you were being authentic to yourself if you if you were like just and fair to your to your family and like in taking in in taking on your responsibilities or something. So um, I don't I don't know why I would personally desire uh, hunter gatherer life. I know I would desire hunter gatherer life more than mid the Middle Ages, but I think I think <laughs> rather rather than just settling for primitive life or just settling for middle ages i think we should try and be at my from my perspective i think we should try and be aspirational to this like future world of still being able to use some technology some technology like printing presses and penicillin and stuff <laughs> so i don't know well yeah yeah it's needed and uh, these these different steps uh, one mm. requires the other i mean you now technology comes around to promise to heal what it has caused in the first place. So, I mean, you know, what, mm -hmm. where do you try to arrest that uh, progression? Mm -hmm. And where do, what mm -hmm. does it all depend on? What, what does it all depend on? You don't, you don't have any technology really without, uh, you know, without uh, the extraction, without the mining, the smelters, the mm -hmm. warehouses, and, and yeah, people yeah. have to assume, gotcha. who do they assume is gonna do all that? It doesn't exist without all that. So that's a, that's a form of slavery. Mm -hmm. But they seem to be fine with that, to have this, have the wonders of technology resting upon what? I mean, mm -hmm. not only the ruin of the natural world, of the biosphere, but, uh, you know, wage slavery for almost countless people, for, for that mm -hmm. to exist. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not a very, uh, uh, yeah. very sorry, uh, assumption. Yeah, and if, if I believed that, that um we were just like going the way of machines and we were going to talk we were, we were going to create AI, 
artificial intelligence and um, terminate ourselves by <laughs> um, just letting them take over and uh, or or, shape, or becoming more machine like. Um, yeah. I would I would definitely yeah. I would definitely worry and not want that. deciding yeah. everything and mm. people don't understand how they work. I mean, we we swept along, mm. uh, you know, in this whole van of the progress with the capital P and look where it's gotten us. It's just mm. it's just becoming horrible on every front. It's, it's one large uh, crisis that all the parts of it are kind of merging into a very very bad uh, picture. Yeah, and if I if I thought that that was, I mean, I I don't know. Like I'm I'm still researching, and like maybe I'm being naive in 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 um in just like uh, uh, advocating for something that is more likely for that to happen. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I I, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I worry that um. Uh, I worry that if we if people take that reduction and try to um try to just like separate themselves off from um te technology and cities that that we we leave people um to uh suffer like we, we we lose hospitals oh yeah so um uh, like i mean i don't know how if you think how useful you think hypotheticals are but um so definitely like if if technology is this thing that's just like manufacturers consent and we and we get towards robots then then that's definitely bad and I, and if that if that if you have a high, if if we have if we have reasonable high confidence that that is the future then obviously i would i would be on board with just trying to collapse the system and or trying to get back to primitivism but um hypothetically oh. <laughs> hypothetically <laughs> sorry these are big uh, big mm -hmm. challenges you yeah. know if, if people you know everybody wants community right i mean we can mm -hmm. all agree on that uh mm -hmm. except what happened to it why did it go mm -hmm. away why is mass society uh, all but obliterated that, all but obliterated the face-to-face -face human contact kind of world, you know, which mm. which I think really did roughly exist before domestication. You know, it's it doesn't, this sounded so utopian to me when I first discovered the literature, you know, mm. first ran into by accident the whole uh, anthropological deal, but, mm. but it actually isn't. And that's, you know, it's just, it's just well known, a lot of it. I mean, a lot of it mm. isn't well known. And, I grant you, we can't know, you know, precisely or even vaguely what what the consciousness was, how satisfied people were in their lives. We we can, you know, we really don't know that. But I mean, mm. but there were some pretty good uh, non-lethal uh, uh, developments, apparently. You know, some contexts that uh, were worthy of uh, lasting for quite some, you know. Mm -hmm. Domestication. I mean, that's that's like one tenth of one percent of of our uh, human species. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, you you know all that, but uh, yeah. So. And anyway, I, yeah, I I really I really value um, some nomadic cultures. That I'm I'm worried that we're we're encroaching on. Um, I think there was a story recently about uh, people in the Amazon uh, taking away uh, loggers in the Amazon, taking away the the, the tribes bow and arrows so that they wouldn't shoot at them <laughs> but then but then leaving them to starve in this in this, in this horrible, horrible way yeah um, yeah. um what was i gonna say um yeah oh so i mean i don't know how how, how useful, useful you think how that was are, but um in terms of in terms of like say we 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 realized this like had to gather a life, lifestyle but there were some people um still who had like the knowledge to create assembly lines for like things like penicillin and like uh, glasses and stuff um and they and they knew they they saw people like disabled or injured and, and they wanted they wanted to create some technology to, to help these people out um would that would that be like a target for direct action or, or would that would that be like a, just like a consent thing? You you let them do that, even if you worry that it it restart, re helps to start re restart technology to that technological society or something. <laughs> does, does well, I don't. Sense? I think you'd, we'd have to, uh, if everybody could pitch in and and try to find uh, workable solutions as we go. Mm -hmm. I mean, was, uh, th I think there could be intermediate steps. You know, it's mm -hmm. we don't want people that unable to live without certain technologies to just simply die off. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it's not clear to me that we need the worldwide grid to uh, 
otherwise you can't achieve that. I mean, there are, I think there are other methods, you know, some of which are sort of mm -hmm. just simple things like, you know, when you're pedaling a bicycle mm -hmm. with the light, you know, you pedal and it mm -hmm. generates enough electricity to light the your tail light, right? Or your headlight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why don't you do that with somebody who needs a respirator? You know, you don't mm -hmm. have to have the whole world system going at, maybe to fix, you know, to, to help people, uh, you know, in different situations. And, uh, and as we kind of try to go away from the dependency, which is, which has been really pretty fatal to the, to, you know, something mm -hmm. like that, whereas it isn't just a blanket theoretical rejection overnight, or you push a button and, and it's, it's something else. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the not, that it isn't quite a fair caricature. I don't think of the primitivist thinking. I'm, 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 uh, no, sure. Sure. It's just, a, it's it's a fun, yeah, it's a funny hypothetical, like thousands of years in the future. Um, I don't know. I, I guess my, I mean, my ideal future is, is, have, is like, a, is a pro-tech society that, that gives, that manages to, um, like, um, conscientiously des decide not to use technology badly. And I, I know that that's, you, um, that's not, you don't see that as possible, but, um, but like gives enough. Um, I, th I don't know. I, I see like in the, in the like labor movement philosophy of like, of like if animals have, um, find a use value in the lands that 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 we can just like give them like uh, give large areas to, to rewild and um i i i would want people i would want people to have the option of 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 um of being able to live like in bear country and and get and risk getting attacked by bears or something but um i uh -huh. yeah I, wor I worry sure in primitive that doesn't seem like that's goes against the logic of domestication you the only thing that was left for indigenous people is the most inhospitable places mm -hmm. on the planet. And, you know, the same goes for other species, you know, it's, mm -hmm. that's why extinction is, is just running riot. And one species after another is either gone or, or threatened mm -hmm. with extinction. That's, that's the logic of it. It's, yeah, mm -hmm. we can dream of free spaces for somebody or another, but what, what would you, you know, where would that come from? What, what, what where would you find the basis for that inside the system, which is so mm -hmm. all enveloping? Mm -hmm. I, would, I would be in favor of it. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it's mm -hmm. just hard to see if there's a solution within within the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so I've I've got I've gone through all my questions. I, I've got I can I can give you one more hypothetical. Um, but if you if you need to go or anything, you just just let just let me know. Um, uh, I was interested. There was a podcast you did um, for I think Wild Oak or something. I'm, I can't remember the name. Um, and then uh, it was about all, uh, uh, lots of uh, topics like humanism and um, uh, and uh, one thing that came up was um, veganism. And then and then there was an interesting response uh, by the person who sent me your email. Um, uh, this uh, person who runs the vegan 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 Anarchist Primitivist website uh, dot wordpress dot com or something. Um, they they did a lot long um, response to some of the points that were brought up, and um, they their their ideal future is 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 um is people like foraging um uh, plants only and living as hunter gatherers and using fire, but um just conscientiously choosing not to hunt animals. Uh -huh. And um, I guess I I I don't I don't personally think that. I, you could you could plan that diet very well with like uh, B12 without without fortified foods and stuff. Um, I think I think duckweed now we found out has has B12. So if you if you lived somewhere that was duckweed, you could maybe do that. But um, um, but I guess I, I get another so another hypothetical that might trans, that might reflect the modern world is um, uh, if you if you knew that you could get all the nutritional needs you needed as as the sense gatherer. Um, life um would you uh, and you knew there wasn't like going to be warfare you knew you had you could maintain the skills of, hunt, of hunting if you needed to go back to that um would you hypothetically choose not to hunt animals as like a, just like living like commu communicating with them as like, like uh, seeing otters in the, in the wild and stuff but just choosing choosing not to not to hunt would do you think that is do you think that would be like an ethical responsibility or do you think um if you, if you knew that you could you could survive perfectly fine I was like low oh, yeah. work hours. It, it sounds rather nice. I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
wouldn't uh, argue against it. I mean, if that's uh, mm. it's conceivable, and uh, mm. I think that you know, hunter gatherer life was more gathering than hunting, but still, mm. uh, maybe mm. that would be more ideal. Uh, mm. It's it's if you're trying to learn anything from the record, it mm. it was. I mean, that's it's kind of it's a bit hard to imagine that in terms of our uh, evolution. Mm. But yeah. uh, it sounds nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a nice dream. Um, I guess, yeah, I don't know, like, because I, um, I mean, I, I mean, I come up against people um, who are, like, really invested in, in, like, in just, like, eating meat because it's their culture and eating these horrible, like, crew farmed animals. And, and um, I, th I think it's, I think it's interesting to, like, I mean, I, I use the argument of, of we have all these, like, greenhouse vegetables we have like thousands of vegetables we can very we can eat a very diet now but um but uh even even if we went back even like even if we went back to primitivist life and we could um uh, survive just gathering um uh and needing a new having a nutrition diet i think there would be like some ethical responsibility there to just to like to embody this like more compassionate um lifestyle yeah. and then yeah you know, uh, right. i think it's it, uh... I, I, I salute your values. I think that's a very worthwhile to think about. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah, then that's good. I'll, I think um, other people will be interested in that. And um, yeah, I think that was all my questions. Do you, do you have anything you want to say? Anything? No questions well, sorry, of me? I talk all day, but uh, I, mm -hmm. I'd better move along myself. But uh, mm -hmm. I enjoyed talking with you, Theo. Yeah, really good. I'll um, I'll type up some of your responses in, into an article, and I'll I'll, I'll make this to a video as well. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Well, maybe we can talk again. Yeah, that'd be great. Lovely. All right. Take care, man. You too. Have a good one.